Hello and welcome back to the channel guys. In this short video, we will be discussing the very basic concepts of an Apache Kafka cluster. In the course of this video, we will discuss what are Kafka producers, what is a Kafka consumer, what are brokers in Kafka, what is a Kafka cluster, what are topics in Kafka, how are topics partitioned, what are offsets to a partition in Kafka, as well as what are consumer groups. So if you have not subscribed this channel already, please do click subscribe and let's get started. Let's get started by discussing what is a Kafka producer. So in Kafka, a producer is any application that sends data messages or events to a Kafka server. Uh, now this data can be of any type, uh, a producer may be generating their own data or they might just be relaying data from another source such as a file or a database. Uh, now as I said, uh, this data can be of any type but for Kafka, the data that it receives is always a simple stream of bytes. Now here we see an example of a producer. Uh, the example given is that of a program that reads data from a SQL database and sends that data to Kafka. Another example would be a video streaming platform that sends an event to a Kafka cluster that a user liked a video. So what is a consumer? Uh, just like a producer sends data to a Kafka cluster, a consumer is just an application that reads data or requests data from Kafka. Uh, for example, an application that reads records from a Kafka server and stores it in a database would be a nice example of what a consumer does in a Kafka cluster. So here we have a diagram of a Kafka ecosystem. As you can see, we have three producers which are pushing messages onto the Kafka cluster. And here we have three consumers who are pulling messages from this same cluster. And as you can see, this Kafka cluster comprises of many brokers. So let us try to find out what a broker is. In very simple terms, a broker in Kafka is simply a server which is running Kafka. And why such a Kafka server known as a broker? Well, because the server is acting as a broker or an agent between the producer and the Kafka consumer. So it says here that producer and consumer are agnostic of each other and communicate only by means of a broker. Next, let us see what is a Kafka cluster. So uh, if you have some knowledge of distributed system, you would know that a cluster of computers refers to connected set of computers that work together and appear to be like a single system. So similarly, a Kafka cluster is simply a group of computers who are all running Kafka and who serve the requests of various producers as well as Kafka consumers. Next, we'll try to understand the concept of a Kafka topic. So a topic in Apache Kafka can be understood as a common identifier for a set of data which is either written to or read from Apache Kafka. We will now see a sample conversation which might be taking place between a consumer and a Kafka broker. So here we have a consumer telling the broker, hey, send me some data. The broker in return asks the consumer, which data do you want? The consumer says to the broker, the data that was sent by producer 123. Now, the broker tells the consumer that producer 123 is sending three types of data, which are temperature, altitude, as well as AQI, air quality index. Now, the consumer tells the broker that give me the AQI data. So, AQI, temperature, and altitude can all be considered here to be different Kafka topics. And we can see that producer 123 is writing to all these three Kafka topics which are temperature, altitude and AQI and the consumer here wants to consume data only for the AQI. So let us see what is the definition of a topic. A topic is a unique name which is given to related data or events 
विच आर सेंट टू और रेड फ्रॉम अ कैफका इंस्टेंस और अ कैफका क्लस्टर एज इन द केस ऑफ द प्रीवियस एग्जाम्पल दैट वी जस्ट सॉ इन द लास्ट लाइड ऑल ऑफ द प्रोड्यूसर्स वॉज सेंडिंग डेटा टू अ टॉपिक कॉल्ड टेम्प एंड द ए क्यू आई डेटा वॉज बींग सेंड टू अ टॉपिक ए क्यू आई नाउ ऑल ऑफ द रिकॉर्ड्स इन अ कैफका क्लस्टर आर ऑर्गेनाइज इन टू वेरियस टॉपिक्स दैट इज टू से दैट इफ अ प्रोड्यूसर wants to write some data on a kafka cluster then the producer has to write to a particular topic and if a consumer wants to consume some data from a kafka cluster they have to specify the name of the topic that they wish to consume data from that that is exactly what the next line says producer applications write data to topics and consumer applications read data from topics so as you can see in this diagram on the screen this particular producer is writing data to topic a and this consumer and this consumer are reading records which are written to topic a further below we can see that we have two producers who are writing to topic b as well as we have a single consumer who is reading the records written into topic b next we try to see what is a partition of a kafka topic so uh, you know that in the big data ecosystem we get a, a very large volume of data so data which needs to be stored in a certain kafka kafka topic can become very huge within a matter of seconds it might even become larger than the capacity of a single computer system or a kafka broker therefore topics in kafka are partitioned into a number of partitions and now these partitions will be distributed throughout the kafka cluster and when a certain message and event or data comes to be written to a kafka topic it can be written to any of the partitions for that particular topic and how is the choice of the partition made well it is generally made based on the message key the message key is generally hashed to a particular partition number and that particular data is written to that partition for that topic we will actually see this in much more detail in one of the future videos and how is the number of partitions for a particular topic decided well it is decided by us when we are creating that particular topic also every partition is stored in a single machine and the partitions are replicated across the kafka cluster for fault tolerance again we'll see this in more detail in one of our future videos so as you can see on the diagram on screen this particular topic has four partitions partition 0 1 2 and 3 and events or data could be written in any of the partitions we can see that in partition 0 we right now have 13 events in partition 1 we have 9 in partition 2 we have 11 and in partition 3 we have 8 events now notice that the message number within a particular partition is known as the offset of that message within that particular partition for example message number 12 has an offset of 12 within partition 0 of the topic let's say topic t so what is basically an offset an offset is the sequence number of a message in a partition of a particular topic and when is this sequence number or this offset assigned well this is assigned as soon as that message or event is written to a kafka topic the offset is immutable that means that once an offset is assigned to an event or message it cannot be changed and as we saw on the previous diagram an offset is local to a partition so for the same topic t partition 0 and partition 1 can have the same value for the offset again we have this diagram here for reference so how do we locate a message in a kafka cluster well for that we make use of the kafka topic then we go to a particular partition and in that partition we look for a particular offset and 
Through this mechanism, we can locate any message or event in a Kafka cluster. So what this means is that any event or message in a Kafka cluster is uniquely recognized by a combination of topic name, partition and offset number. The last topic for discussion is what is a consumer group. So a consumer group refers to a group of consumers which are reading from the same Kafka topic. Now what is the need of a group of consumers? Now as you know Kafka topics can be huge. In this big data world the volume within a topic can really really be very very huge. So to keep the consumption of this data or these events or messages manageable, we might need more than one consumers. So Kafka provides us with the capability of creating consumer groups, which can all read data from the same topic simultaneously. Now the constraint here is that each such consumer within a consumer group will read only from a fixed partition for that particular topic. We will see this in the diagram in the next slide. Also, please note that one partition for a topic can only be read by one consumer. Now, this is to encourage item potency. Otherwise, two consumers might consume the same message and it might lead to erroneous states of our system. What this also implies is that if we have more consumers in a group than we have partitions for the topic, then some of the producers will remain idle. All of these things that we just discussed can be easily explained by means of this diagram. Here we have two producers which are trying to produce some data into the Kafka cluster. Now let us first see consumer group B that is the consumer group below the group B domain Y. Now the topic B in the Kafka cluster has only one partition but this consumer group has two consumers. So only one consumer which is C5 is able to read events from topic B partition 0 and the consumer C4 will remain idle in this consumer group. The domain X consumer group reads data from topic A. The consumer C1 reads data from partition 1. Consumer C2 reads it from partition 3 and consumer C3 reads it from partition 2. If this group had a lesser number of consumers, then one of the consumers would be reading from multiple partitions of topic A. Also, you can note that consumer C2 consumes messages both from topic A as well as topic B. We will discuss consumer groups in much more detail also in one of our future videos. As the purpose of this video was just to give a very high level overview of all of the concepts of a Kafka class so that we can easily come to speed with writing some Kafka code. So that's it for this small video guys. If you found the content of the video helpful, please do hit the like button. If you find the content of my channel helpful, please click subscribe. You can hit the bell icon to never miss any new updates. Like always, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you very soon with a brand new tutorial.